good afternoon everyone uh, i'm john tokla and uh, he uh, sen already introduced myself um i work as uh, at lindel basel as uh, head of data solutions um i'm here to present the hybrid data warehousing um i mean uh, can you we can make it more interactive this session so uh, i would like for you guys to put uh, how many of you guys have not moved to hybrid environment yet so maybe you can you can put it in the chat um and uh, we can go from there so um basically what is hybrid data warehousing um is like half of your data residing on prem and half of the uh, uh, data residing on the cloud and you combine these two data to present sometimes to whatever the um uh the data that uh, we can uh, do for your reporting your analytics and all the stuff so if if nobody i mean for those people who are who have not done this hybrid data solutions so here are the things what do you need to consider you know why do i need to consider for going hybrid data warehouse so potential merger with the data uh, big data you know like say for example your data your analytics require uh, high potential um, you know analytics like uh, demographics data or ethnicity or um, population uh, you know so that kind of information that you need to join to produce um, some kind of analytics high end analytics or ai machine learning some stuff um, you know so you definitely need to consider hybrid because to put that big data in your environment it is going to take a lot of data a lot of resources on your side so you will definitely need to consider uh, going to hybrid environment uh dealing with short lived projects is one of the consideration say for example you are doing some analysis and then uh, you want to you that project is lived for a short time meaning the resources or the hardware or the software that is lived only for the short time then you can consider that uh, going to hybrid because uh, for for getting acquiring all this uh, hardware is going to be very expensive for a short lived project and then the third one is you don't know how much how, uh, you know um, the you can move on to the second slide uh, sam um you don't know how much a uh, horsepower is required to crunch these numbers you know like some of these models right you you plug and play with the models and you don't even know how much um uh, how much data is required how much horsepower is required uh, to crunch these numbers in that case also you need to go hybrid because half of the data can reside on prem and half of the data can reside on cloud and then you can pull the data and crunch the number as it goes because when you have in hybrid environment you can scale up and scale down as needed so that is one of the consideration and then when it is time to replace your hardware uh, you know uh, uh, that is another consideration that you need to um you know think about uh, going to hybrid because you don't want to just purchase the whole hardware at on prem maybe you can scale it down a little bit and then push some of your uh, some of your data on cloud so that will be your hybrid environment um you know as as mentioned you are dealing with a lot of ai and machine learning uh, data so these days the cloud is becoming more and more um you know uh, accustomed to the uh, ai and machine learning platforms they are coming up with the free platform so you definitely need to consider um dealing with uh, hybrid uh, you know if you are dealing with ai and machine learning uh dealing with unstructured data also you know like a cloud platforms uh you know whether you go with uh, microsoft whether you go with aws doesn't matter whatever is a platform but there are unique ways to connect directly to your unstructured data and then get reports out of it without doing lot of etl and lot of um you know processing and massaging the data so these are the some of the topics that uh, you know that you need to consider when you are trying to move to hybrid um i don't see the questions but do you have any other questions yeah i was going to say 
Yeah, yeah, it, it's a mixed bag. You know, Jamie was saying that uh, they have they are not a hybrid right now. Uh, Tina was saying that they are. Um, Matthew asks, you know, does unstructured data require a hybrid setup? We don't currently have a good solution for unstructured data. Yes, yeah, definitely unstructured data. If you if you go on prem, you need to build a lot of infrastructure, a lot of softwares, licensing costs, and everything. So if you go hybrid, what happens is there are so many solutions that you can consider, you know, uh, as I said, whether you go with AWS or whether you go with Microsoft or, or any other platform that you can, uh, you can even uh, go with, but uh, it doesn't matter, but it is easy for you to extract the data, whether it is JSON files or XML files, even flat files, you can, um, pull the data directly from those file structures and then directly query and then store the data as needed. Or sometimes you don't use, you can store the data at, at a summary level rather than uh, the transactional level. So it is up to your thing. So go to the next slide, Sam. Yep. Yes. And Tan Weir was wondering if hybrid data warehousing would help uh, in the removal of silos within an organization. So silos, doesn't matter how which platform that you use or which um, which software you use. You need to have a methodology. You need to be unified. That's a very very good question. You know, it is all um, the way you think about your data and the way you think or deal with the data. So um, this doesn't solve. But again, uh, that is a one step forward. I would say because. Um, you can, there are a lot of, um, lot of uh, platforms right now that, is, that can give leverage to share the, the reports that you create, analytics that you create and everything, but you need to have a governance model so that you can remove the silos. So again, it's a, it's a change of mentality. It's a change of, um, change of uh, thought process in the people. Uh, I mean, that can, uh, that is a one step forward, but I think in, you need to achieve the silos, you know, take, remove the silos from your organization. You need to have uh, more uh, governance methodologies. I mean, that is a completely different topic that we can talk some other time. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, this provides at least some kind of platform for you to, um, uh, to grow in that direction, for sure. Any other questions from anyone on nope, this topic? That, that, um, Tanweer asks, how about the presence of data silos, which often means duplication and rework, which leads to waste of resources and higher expenses? So, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, the data silos are going to make, but again, when you have, uh, uh, we're going back to the same, uh, same topic of data governance, uh, BA governance and that kind of thing. So the topic of going to uh, hybrid, is it going to uh, uh, resolve the silos? It's not going to resolve because you need to have a proper mechanism to control, um, you know, or to come up with or to train your business on how to get rid of the silos. So this is a one step forward, but this, this may be helping, but this is not the only one which is going to help if I can, if I can make you guys understand. Yeah, Jamie asks, so, what is a de determination to decide to move data to cloud? What is optimal? So what is optimal? Um, well, um, it, it all depends upon how big is your organization, right? I mean, big or small doesn't matter whether you are going to uh, go to cloud or whether you are going to platform or anything. So there is no, uh, okay, if we have one terabyte, you move the net. There is no formula like that. It's all your choice, you know, it's all your organizational choice, you know? So there are things that you need definitely need to consider, which is going going to the next next slide. Actually, this, the current slide. So architectural planning is you definitely need to think about how you are going to plan your 
process, how you are planning, um, you know, uh, what is the power required. Even though you go to the cloud, you need to at least assume how much power is going to reside because if you start using it or, or leave it for the people, you may be, um, you know, uh, charged extra for querying the data. You know, if you, if you give it to complete access to the business, you know, business may run some query, which you don't know, but ultimately you're going to get a big, big uh, dollar amount, you know, invoice from the, from, from using, you know, uh, the data, big data, right? So definitely you need to plan and then you need to control, ha have a controls in place for doing the hybrid data structure. And then um, you need to think about uh, 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 how you think about like, hey, I'm going to bring all these JSON files or XML files into the into the storage. You know, I mean, uh, if you think about like a Microsoft, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm not talking to a specific client, but I'm just bringing one example. Um, so if you push the data into serverless, there is no, no charge for you. As long as you don't query the data, you're trying to query the data, then only it charges you money. So the similar way AWS and other platforms do. So basically how much data you're going to keep it on structured and how, many, how much data you're going to keep it structured. So that is a definitely planning is required when you're thinking to move it to hybrid environments. Uh, uh, and then one more thing is when you're taking the data out, right? So uh, from on-prem to cloud, you definitely need to think about your compliance. You know, how am I going to deal with the compliance? So if you're, if you're having uh, your data, like, uh, uh, you know, HR data, you know, like right, right now, these, these days, you're, if you are using SAP, maybe your success factor, right? Success factor has all your employee information, or if you are doing uh, work day, may have all your employee information, or your Oracle is your employee information. But definitely you need to bring the data into, uh, into the hybrid platform at some point, you know, to deal with all the, you know, uh, like uh, doing like high-end projects like AI and machine learning and all those things, you know, uh, uh, say for example, you want to create, uh, you're hiring for a, uh, a sales rep position, right? So when you're trying to bring a sales rep position, what is the ideal uh, sales rep position, you know, in, in this regard? So you need to crunch, you need to have a historical data for this, and then you need to have your sales data merging together and then finding all these models together. And then you come up with, okay, this is uh, my ideal sales rep look like. He should have 10 years of experience, two years with the company, work, uh, work with the company for two years, uh, you know, have graduation, whatever is the uh, ideal sales rep position, you need to bring the data. But when you're bringing the data, your compliance is going to say, hey, why are you bringing the data? What is the compliance? I need to have controls over, uh, over the data. Yeah, definitely you need to plan for your compliance, you know? So that is the yeah. one important thing that you need to consider. Go ahead, Sam. So Tanwir was saying, you know, I understand we're talking about hybrid data warehousing. However, in a traditional organization, what would be the best approach in developing a truly integrated data warehouse? Are they the same? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, it, it is the same. You know, in terms of when you when you when you bring the data from, um, you know, from different platforms, and some of the data. Uh, you keep it on prem and some of the data you migrate on cloud and then those things interact each other to create something else then that becomes your hybrid environment yeah yeah definitely you can that yeah. that itself is is your hybrid environment and then matthew follows up can you reliably create a long term road roadmap with hybrid solution so what is the guarantee that the product or service offered will will still exist yeah, so definitely, um, I would definitely go with a uh, with a bigger uh, bigger firms. You know, like a, uh, anything like Microsoft or AWS, they are going to stay for for a longer time. You know, when you are trying, definitely there there right now you will see a lot of smaller firms which are like uh, 
you know, uh, I mean, I don't want to name specific ones, but definitely you need to be careful with those smaller firms, which, you know, you definitely need to ask a question, how many customers you guys have, how much data you guys have as a whole from the whole, all these clients and uh, how many use, users you have, you know, you need to ask specific questions to make sure that you retain the data. And then definitely you need to ask another important question. Tomorrow, if I want to pull the data back, you know, what is the plan? You know, how, what is my strategy? You know, you need to ask these, these questions to the client that you're, you're going with, you know, the hybrid platform with. Um, you know, those are definitely an important question. I mean, that is a very, very good point, actually, whoever asked that question. Yeah, definitely uh, exit plan. You know, what is my exit plan? Uh, you know, uh, how am I going to pull the data back from cloud if, if that is, uh, the cloud says, yeah, hey, I'm closing my shop to today. You know, what is my my thing? You know, what is my exit plan? So you need to definitely think about that. How strong is the client? How big is this uh, the, is this uh, cloud platform? And how many customer it has? You know, how many customers do you you guys? A lot of lot of times these days, uh, they think that they, they say, hey, we are giving um, you know free um, you know. 10 GB line for you, 10 GB platform for you, and until um, 25 users, you know? So it's very, sounds very interesting. You know, you put the data in there, but the thing is you need to think about like uh, who is reading this, who is managing these servers, you know? Because it's not, when you when it goes to the cloud platform, it is not your DBA who is going to watch the watch the data, but it is going to be somebody else DBA, right? So they have to maintain those things. So you definitely need to think about who is watching and how do you have, how do you plan your compliance, you know? So those kind of things definitely matter in terms of compliance. And then create a complete roadmap for all, uh, uh, you know, like, hey, what is my strategy? How I'm going to bring, what data I'm going to bring, what years I'm going to bring, and then how I'm going to reside. Uh, so you need to plan complete roadmap of all the uh, data that you need to bring into the cloud, you know? And yeah, then- and, and Krishna asks, um, isn't the performance and costs uh, the biggest hindrances in embracing hybrid? How can we provide a seamless experience in this architecture? Yeah, so basically, uh, that's a very good question you know like uh, uh, when when you think about this one right like when you think of a hybrid platform um so when when you are trying to merge the big data with an existing data for example uh, in certain cases your erp data may be residing or or your sales data may be residing on prem and then um you know you need to say uh, for example, you are doing a market analysis of combining that data with um, with the demographics information. So, which areas I can grow my business into? So, you combine these two things together, then you you get uh, get your uh, data out. So, uh, it works seamlessly because the da the data that is residing on cloud, which you know you can get it th that that demographics information and all those things already available at your cloud platform probably. And then all you need to do is bring your, um, bring your on-premises sales information into the cloud platform and then start merging these two things together and say, okay, give me now, uh, you know, my current sales for this zip code is this, uh, you know, do you think based on the demographics, whether I, I need to expand my uh, you know, locations in this lo in this zip code or not, you know? So basically the way you need to plan is um, when you plan the data for the, uh, for the cloud, you know, for the hybrid, you need to plan for the, to be in the cloud platform, you know? So, and then for example, um, you may have that, uh, uh, you may be having a transactional level information on cloud saying that, okay, maybe some other, uh, per, uh, some other client has some data, uh, you know, at a very, very detailed level. 
you know, when you are trying to bring that detailed sales level, for example, sales data in, in, in the cloud, and then you want to bring that data, you don't bring the whole data into your on, on-prem version. You know, you need to bring the data into summary version, right? So that is how it works. You know, when you are transferring the data between these systems, you don't transfer the data in a very, um, you know, like a high transactional level data. So that you can sustain. So did I answer uh, your question? Uh, I hope I answered your question, uh, Krishna, uh, in terms of how you sustain. So basically when you're transferring, you minimize the data transfer. You don't transfer like a big, big chunks of data between. You you transfer that data as needed based you know, at a summary level or as needed level basis, you know? So that is my, my take on that. You know, I would assume organizational change is required to implement a new pro, uh, process or practice and a hybrid data warehouse is no exception. How do we ra- rationalize this cost? Yeah, um, basically, yes, I definitely agree. But you, as long as uh, that's what I have been talking to you guys about, the governance model, right? The governance model will define those charters, you know, how you... Uh, what data can go into cloud, what data can reside on-prem, and when we move the data into cloud, what benefits or advantages or disadvantages that we are going to get. So you need to be presenting not only to an IT, it is not an IT function anymore, right? You know, there is a data, there's a cost, there's a compliance, everything. So that is why you need to form a governance committee in order to achieve these things. So you need to have a governance model. You'll present it, okay, um, today we are trying to take the data of uh, employee data into cloud. I mean, employee data, when when you say employee, you may be taking a part of the employee data for this analysis, how much it is going to cost, how we are going to take care of the compliance, how we are going to, how big is this data and what is the benefits of this data, how much we are going to charge by the, uh, by the cloud platform for this. So all those things needs to be taken into consideration. So that will be defined and guided by your governance committees. Thank you. Um, Matthew had a really good question. Would it make sense to encode, encode the data on the cloud to save costs and handle the decoding um, locally or would that adversely affect speed? In my opinion, the, the more you go cloud, you will have a lesser coding platforms now and then um, but again there is a minimal cost associated with those uh, uh, those things when you go to cloud platform so um, but if you started developing uh, at your locals and on on uh, on prems version definitely you'll be spending more development costs more more software cost so your in my opinion if you go move to hybrid you will have lesser cost associated with it because uh, there are so many programs right now with various vendors. Uh, you know, you may get a, a, a bigger bang for your buck for sure. Let's go to the next slide. So, how does my my platform look like? You know, uh, actually, this this is a very interesting uh, uh, hybrid environment where uh, your finance data, your sales data, your HR data, your IoT data some of these can reside not only on-prem, but also in the cloud, actually. So uh, the uh, presentation of uh, here, whatever you have uh, in, the, in, the applic- in the diagram that it shows that cloud apps, but those apps can be finance or it can be sales or HR or IoT, some kind of IoT data. So in other words, instead of pulling the data directly from cloud to on-prem, you may be pulling it from cloud to cloud, you know, or you may be pulling it from cloud to on-prem in some cases, and then maybe push the data at a summary level back into your uh, uh, cloud platform. So it depends upon what you are, what you are going to do, what it is, the use case that you're dealing with. And, you know, I mean, where is your data residing? You know, whether, whether it is on-prem, whether your application is on-prem, you know, like right now, if you see um, 
you know, Oracle finances, a lot of people use, use our, our cloud-based solutions. You know, if you see sales, Salesforce or, or anything like that, you know, it, it, it's a cloud-based solution. You know, some of the people, they develop on-prem their, their cloud-based solutions, uh, uh, sorry, the sales, sales solutions, they are on-prem. So it depends upon what, the platforms. HR data, most of the people now, nowadays success factor uh, can be on-prem and some, some, sometimes it, it can be on cloud. Um, you know, your work day is always on cloud. Your Oracle, it, it can be on cloud. So it depends upon the, the platform. So whatever it is, you have to have an uh, extract, transform and load process whether to load it into um, the warehouse on-prem or sometimes you pull directly the data into your uh, data mart, which is on the cloud. And then you pull the data into um, your reporting platform and join. Sometimes you can even join. Uh, uh, actually, we have, we have done successful use cases where you pull the data directly from application and then join it in the report also but I wouldn't suggest it, but uh, uh, there is a specific use case for us. So you can even combine and then provide the data to, to the users. So yeah, this is the same architecture, the three-tier architecture, whether you go cloud or whether you, you go on hybrid or whether you are in the same platform, it is always a three-tier architecture. Bottom tier is the database and data warehousing. The, your server architecture is there and then your online analytics platform, you know, you're providing your abstracts and database, and then your top layer is going to be uh, your APIs or, or reports or extracts. So same thing will continue, even when you have, whether you, you're dealing with completely on-prem, whether you're dealing with um, completely on cloud or you're being, dealing with hybrid. A lot of people have a misconception you know, they think that these are pretty basics. You know, you have to separate these things um, and definitely need to consider them individually or else, you know, um, a lot of clients will confuse you actually. The uh, on level, uh, when you go to uh, hybrid platform, you may be, get confused and then uh, your architecture may change, but definitely you need to consider all these three layers separately. So uh, advantages and disadvantages. What are the main advantages of going to cloud platform? Um, advanced analytics. You know, when you go to the hybrid platform, now uh, most of the customers, whether it is AWS or Microsoft or wh whoever is your, uh, um, you know, you're dealing with, they're coming with a with lot of advanced analytical platform where you can directly uh, take the models that are existing and then use them on, on your data. So on your data. So it becomes much more cheaper for you guys to do it and then increase or decrease the horsepower. So basically what happens is when you're doing such loads, right? So it may require horsepower, but after the after you're done with the, you're running your model, you may not be using your horsepower. So if you do that on-prem, what is going to happen is you end up with the hardware which is idle for, for all these you know, hours, which you don't use, but in the cloud, you can bring it down and you can still use it uh, and increase it as needed and then crunch it back down. So it's very important to uh, understand this and try to plan accordingly. Um, then uh, the DR is implied, meaning like when you go to hybrid, you don't even need to think about your, your DR anymore because the DR itself, the cloud platform take care of the DR itself. So you don't need to think about that. I mean, basically, uh, you know, sometimes you may be connecting to a server in, uh, a, a, you know, in, um, in, in US, or if there is some issue, you may be connecting to a server in Shanghai or India or wherever it is, you know, so it automatically implies and the client will take care of the DR itself. Disadvantages, planning for the data security because you know when you are pushing the data into cloud you know particularly your employee you need to definitely think about your ccp who is touching my data whether 
you need to plan for your compliance. You need to plan for your security. How am I going to migrate this data during the migration itself? You know, like it, you need to be careful about how I'm going to uh, copy my data into the thing. You know, how am I going to copy the data into cloud? So definitely need to plan for security. Um, you know, the bandwidth between your on-prem and cloud is very important too. You know, think, think about this one. You know, like uh, you need to have a T1 line established depending upon your data, um, you know, uh, how much data you're going to transfer from on-prem to hybrid. So definitely you need to think about that. You need to have a, a T1 line or a dedicated line planned between your on-prem and cloud platform. And definitely, have controls over your sensitive data. You need to have controls over your sensitive data. It is not only about who is who is updating my data, it is about who is seeing the data, right? Say for example, if somebody is seeing your social security number, you know, you need to think about it, right? You need you you need to plan it accordingly. You know, so th those are the things. Could you recoup costs by renting extra server time in case you overestimate the horsepower needer needed? And he, he was referring to renting out the compu uh, computational time for other projects or organizations. Yeah, definitely. That is the main advantage of going to cloud. And definitely you will gain by doing that. You know, you can, a lot of, lot of times when you try to go to a client and see, say, they will try to upscale and sell you upscale, but you don't need to buy upscale. You need to think about what you need for uh, 100%, uh, like at least your 80% of utilization, and then um, don't buy that 20% extra. And then, uh, you know, as needed basis, you can push it up and then say, hey, I need this, the remaining, and then you can pay extra. That way you can recoup your money um, by doing so proper planning is required. You know, what is my, how much data I'm going to utilize, what horsepower I'm going to utilize on daily basis versus once in a time, you know, maybe once in a month or, you know, for your close process. A lot of, a lot of people have these uh, GL close processes, right? So usually uh, where you have a high demand, uh, you know, when you need to close your books, you need to close your sales first, you need to close your, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and then you come to your GL and then you uh, create your 10K reports for your uh, thing, right? So in that case, you definitely need high horsepower. So, but you need that one on the month of like maybe uh, uh, last day of the month, 31st or first or second day of the month, right? When you close your books. So, but you don't need, you don't need that high bandwidth throughout the month. So in that case, you don't buy that whole um, horsepower at a time, and you just increase only in the uh, you know plan for that only during the uh, high utilization period. Looking at the number of disadvantages, we need to really think about what business outcomes are we really driving. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That is that's where the governance things will play into picture. So you definitely need to have a governance committee and uh, and uh, include the business in it. Always include the business in it. You know, like uh, I would definitely have like uh, my AVP from sales, AVP from, uh, you know, finance and the AVP from whatever, you know, maybe it consists of eight to 10 uh, members in that governance committee who defines actually yes in fact this is a good use case where you can take the data to, to cloud or no you don't need to take this data to cloud or we still maintain uh, but again you know a lot of times I mean old school a lot of people they think uh, that okay my if I go if I take my data to cloud it's going to be not secure. No, that is not the case. Your data is going to be secure for sure. You need to educate them as well. So, I mean, a, a lot of uh, old school clients will think that taking the data is going to be stolen by somebody if you if you go hybrid. No, that is not the case. You know, there will be big big lawsuits that that happens if if my data is stolen from cloud, right? So definitely think about those kind of lines and, uh, and plan accordingly. Yeah, those are the things that I have for today.
you know, what are your suggestions for convincing clients that the cloud is safe? Uh, how do I convince my, uh, yeah, that is a very good person. You know, like uh, there are like right now, if you think about your fortune 500 companies, right? So I, I assume, I mean, I, I, there was a survey that I read. There are at least, at least um, out of more than 400 people are on cloud, you know? So definitely all the big, big, big guys are going to cloud at least on hybrid platforms. So definitely you can at least take those numbers and Google it actually, who is, who is on the cloud, you know? So you can take those numbers and present it to the, uh, the committee. Actually that committee, you know, that I'm talking to you guys about, you know, you can form that committee and inform the committee and then educate that committee so that you can uh, talk to them. John, thanks again for your time. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll see everybody soon.